I, uh, a friend of mine was telling me about this guy that started this religion. His name was Buddha something. I can't remember what his last name was. Maybe that was his last name. Anyway, doesn't matter. Point is, he was talking about how all the living things on this planet are connected uh, because we're living things on this planet that's also living, so that makes every living thing have a purpose. And I agree with that. Except for mosquitoes. Let's kill them, shall we? Come on, let's do it. We're bigger than them. We got opposable thumbs. Let's use them for mosquito genocide. Let's do it. I know there's some people out there that claim that mosquito eradication would be detrimental to our ecosystem. And those people are called smarty pants biologists. But have these so-called smarty pants biologists ever seen the documentary Jurassic Park? in which a group of scientists take a fossilized mosquito, extract its dino DNA, and then bring dinosaurs back to life. And some of you might be thinking, dinosaurs back on Earth sounds great. I wish somebody would make a park of the Jurassic nature where I could go and visit these dinosaurs. Well, that's exactly what Jurassic Park Founder and CEO, John Hammond thought. <laughs> and then dinosaurs tried to eat him and his grandbabies. You just can't trust carnivorous dinosaurs. Even when everything's going great for them, they'll do some violent shit and fuck up human relations. You might remember in Jurassic Park, the scientists created all the dinosaurs to be female as a way of controlling the population. And then you might also remember that prophesized by good Dr. Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> life will find a way. And then it did. Somehow, some way, those lesbian dinosaurs <laughs> found a way to defy nature and create babies. And then you may also remember at the end of Jurassic Park, part two, one of the very few documentary sequels, that all the dinosaurs moved to sunny San Diego. Those dinosaurs were creating babies and they were living it up in a gay-friendly state on the beach, living every gay couple's dream. But then what do those dino dykes go and do? They immediately start eating people and destroying public property, immediately ruining their reputation in the gay community, not to mention the positive gay message of the Jurassic Park democ film franchise. <laughs> I shouldn't even brought up that the dinosaurs are gay because it has nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter if a carnivorous dinosaur is gay or straight or even metrosexual. That dinosaur is going to try to eat you just like those goddamn mosquitoes. There's no two ways about it. You can't tell them anything because they don't speak English in the first place. I had a mosquito bite me in my taint area. Flew up into my pants, unbeknownst to me, didn't have my consent at all. You ever have that happen? You, somebody messes with their genitals and then you get slightly itchy? <laughs> Hope everybody knows what their taint is. Can everybody that knows what their taint is point to their taint so everybody can see? Taint's an important part of the body. You know it's important because it's got several names. There's the taint, there's the grundle, there's the gooch, there's the go-between, there's the fleshy fun bridge, there's my personal favorite, the anus penis. Anybody know the real scientific name? I, I didn't know it for a long time until I looked it up. I used to know it. 
Uh, but then somehow it got kicked out of my brain because it didn't have enough RAM space. But apparently it had plenty of room for seven bullshit names for this part of the body. <laughs> It's called the perineum. I didn't, I didn't learn that in public school either. Spent all that time in sex ed class, learned about penises and vaginas and buttholes. Skipped right over the perineum. Had to get all my anus penis knowledge from the streets. <laughs> Some of you at this point might be wondering what the hell my goddamn point is in telling you all this. The point is, imagine this. Imagine that mosquito that bit my anus penis got fossilized in some tree sap somewhere. Now imagine in the future, after the human race has been wiped out, probably because of some artificial drone intelligence that destroyed us like in the Terminator documentaries. A thousand years from now, when aliens have come and inhabited this planet, some of the more science-oriented aliens will probably find my mosquito DNA inside that mosquito with my taint DNA. <laughs> They'll bring humans back to life. Next thing you know, we got a bunch of human beings in cages and a bunch of snot-nosed alien kids taking pictures of themselves with our naked imprisoned bodies behind them. Tell, telling their friends, oh, having such a great time at Homo Sapien Park. <laughs> Do you want that to happen? <laughs> I know I don't. It's a goddamn war. It's up to us to do something about it. We cannot get the federal government involved. If we do, it'll be just like the war on drugs and the war on terror. And the problem will only get worse and it'll never fucking end. And next thing you know, Halliburton will be an independent contractor. And then all of a sudden, a big part of our economy is the military mosquito industrial complex. <laughs> Trump or Clinton, they're not talking about this problem. <laughs> That's why I feel like the choice between Republican and Democrat these days, kind of equivalent equivalent to the choice between Coke and Pepsi. You might think one tastes better than the other, but hey, they're both fucking terrible for you, so... They all got high fructose corn syrup in them. Anyway, I was hoping to end on a stronger note, but... That's it for me. Please welcome back to the stage, Shane! Give me over Johnny Gray! Going out like you came in. All right. Man. I am half tempted to pay for law school for you. I would love to see you as a lawyer. God, wouldn't that be awesome? Fuck Matlock. Like, just four hours in, you're just like, he makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs>